Today's video is sponsored by my book. Link to Kindle and paperback versions down below. My understanding is that the current discourse in CRP is to not share your character sheets because people are scared of metagamers. Um, honestly, I don't buy this. I don't. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about crafting characters for combat roleplay. So most of y'all know that my connection to combat roleplay is kind of surface level, tangential, I haven't done it in a long time. So for today's video, I consulted with a friend of mine named Pickles, and I would love for you guys to check out his Discord server linked down below. He has a great community where he is supporting other kind of nerds and hobbyists and things like that. So go check him out. If you're not very familiar with combat roleplay at all, I first recommend to go check out my etiquette video, so I will link that up in the card for you guys. It goes through a little bit of a history of combat roleplay and some terms that you might need to know, and kind of understanding the basis of how this type of roleplay works. So today we're going to go through four tips about creating characters for combat roleplay, and a lot of this stuff is things that I've kind of sort of talked about before, but I'm going to apply them to a combat roleplay scenario. So the first tip to consider is what kinds of characters are welcome in the combat roleplay space that you're about to enter? We talked in my etiquette video about the different tiers, and those tiers are kind of combat roleplay writing styles, but there are also different types of character classes, if you will, when it comes to combat roleplay. And depending on the roleplay, they might allow any type of character, or they might only allow characters from certain groupings. So let's go over those groupings. We have realistic melee, unrealistic melee, moderate powers, and powered characters. Realistic melee is basically what you would think that it is. It's the kind of combat that you would do in real life. Maybe the roleplay is about some kind of regulated fighting, like wrestling or boxing. Or maybe things are unregulated, like it's a roleplay about street gangs or something like that. Or maybe weapons are involved, like guns or swords. But regardless, everything in the roleplay stays within the realm of what can actually happen in real life. Unrealistic melee still uses the tools that we have access to in real life, such as our bodies or weapons, but some magic will also be involved. Early episodes of Black Clover are a good example of this. The main character is born without magic, but later in his life he comes across a grimoire that does grant him magic like everyone else. So the early episodes, while he's still behind on his magic, are unrealistic melee. Moderate powers is where explicit supernatural or magical powers are allowed, but there will be specific limits on what kinds of powers your character can have or how far those powers can go. Usually there's some kind of reason within the setting that certain powers are considered more realistic or less realistic and therefore allowed or not allowed. Naruto, I feel like, is a good example of this. Everything in Naruto is ninjutsu, but some of that ninjutsu feels like straight-up magic to me, like Tsukiyomi or truth-seeking orbs. Like, that's just magic. Powered characters is where all hell breaks loose. This is where you get things like Dragon Ball Z power level over 9000 insanity. This is where, if you go on long enough, the characters might as well be gods. Some games are going to allow a mix of different character types for the setting, and some games are only going to allow one character type that fits that particular setting. If you're newer to combat roleplay, I recommend joining a setting that's mostly friendly towards UM and MP characters. The reason why I recommend this is if you make a PC character right off the bat, it's going to be really hard to resist god modding, and if you do god mod, you're going to ruin your reputation. And when it comes to RM characters, people are going to expect that you've done your research so that your combat is realistic, and that is a lot more effort for you as the person creating the character. So for that reason, UM and MP are the easiest groupings of characters to create for a newer combat role player. So once you've identified the type of character that you're going to make, let's move on to tip number two. Pick your powers and strengths based off of your possible opponents. So since combat roleplay is so focused on fighting, what you'll want to do is take a look at the other characters in the space that you're about to join and consider crafting a character where those players are going to look at it and think, that would be a really fun character for my character to fight. 
That means you want to come in with a character that can both win and lose. What you want is when another character wins against yours, that player feels like they earned that win. And then on the flip side, if you win and the other character loses, that other player feels like the loss was justified. My recommendation is to go for a character that can win somewhere around like 40 to 60% of the time. But if you are super new to combat roleplay, you might want to go even a little bit lower and try to make a character that can win maybe about 30-35% of the time. The reason why is this gives you a chance to really practice and understand the CRP space that you're stepping into without garnering the worst possible reputation that a combat role player can get, which is being a god modder. And do not under any circumstances god mod, and that includes crafting a character that just can't help but god mod. Unless you're super experienced, in which case like you don't need this video anyway, Avoid powers that are easy to be taken to a god modding place, such as time manipulation, teleportation, mind control, or mind reading. It can be really difficult in CRP to play a character with powers like that and not just like cheesy curb stomp every single opponent that comes your way. And obviously so, like the goal of CRP is to win fights. And not just because winning feels good, but also you want to win enough fights that other players feel like it would be challenging for their character to fight your character, and thus that gets you more role plays. So pick strengths and powers that will cause your character to win some of the time, but not all of the time. Then on the flip side, let's cover tip number three. Pick your weaknesses based off of what your character's strengths and powers are. Once you have your powers set up, Take a look at that character and make sure that the powers themselves have a weakness and also that the character has a weakness. No one's going to want to fight your character if they have zero chance of winning. So build in things that other characters can potentially exploit to win. Now this doesn't have to be crazy. We can keep it modest, kind of like what we said about the powers. You can keep your weaknesses modest too. That's totally fine. Exactly what's going to be going too far really depends on what powers and strengths you picked out for your character during tip number two. All right, so now that you have all of that, let's talk about tip number four. Write all of this down on a character sheet. In narrative RP, you're expected to have a bio. In combat roleplay, you're expected to have a character sheet. Yes, this character sheet may list things like the character's history and personality for roleplay purposes, but this sheet must list your character's strengths and weaknesses. This is your tool to communicate to other players what fighting your character might be like, and thus get you fights. Just like in a tabletop dice game where you have to maintain a character sheet so that you know what your character's stats and equipment are, when it comes to CRP, you have to keep a character sheet so that you know what powers and moves your character is able to do. This binds you to what your character can and can't do during a fight. If it's not reasonable based on your character sheet, then your character can't do it. And it is good before a fight to swap character sheets with the other person. Even if you don't read the other person's character sheet because maybe you don't want spoilers or something, you still would have it and the other person has yours, so therefore you've built that trust between each other so that you can make sure you guys feel the fight is fair. Now, small aside. My understanding is that the current discourse in CRP is to not share your character sheets because people are scared of metagamers. Um, honestly, I don't buy this. I don't. I think by not sharing your character sheet, you're just shifting the blame of where the potential cheating can happen. And like metagaming happens and sometimes it's totally by accident. I think it's more important to share character sheets and build that trust between you and the person that's playing the other character that your character is going to fight than it is to be like, oh, I'm going to keep my character sheet secret so the other person doesn't metagame me because I'm a good person and I never cheat, but they might cheat. Like. No, this is just not a thing. I don't think most metagaming happens on purpose. So share your character sheets, build that trust so that you can feel really good at the end of the fight, like it went the way that it was supposed to go and you feel, you know, really proud of your win. Or if you lost, you feel like it's justified. So those are my beginner tips for crafting combat roleplay characters. To recap, first, identify what kind of characters are welcome in the space that you're going to be roleplaying. 
then craft your character's strengths and powers against the other characters available, then craft your character's weakness against their own powers, and lastly, put it all on a character sheet. Now, combat roleplay is a lot more about winning and losing than narrative roleplay is, so there's a lot more advanced stuff when it comes to kind of navigating that sort of win-loss situation that you have in combat roleplay, but this video should be enough to get you started crafting your first combat roleplay character. Let me know down below if this helped you or if there are other things that you think are essential for new people to know when it comes to crafting their first combat roleplay character. I would love to hear from you guys. Also, if you are a newer combat role player and you're going to go use this, let me know how it goes. I'm really curious. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.